Hi, this is Chef Skip. We're going to talk about salads and dressings. Quote, too many simple green salads suffer from the lack of imagination. Unquote. James Beard, American cookbook author. Composition and evaluation of the salad. Since the early days of salad preparation, the name for the salad has either been given in recognition of its main ingredients or in recognition of an individual for whom or by whom the salad was created. Although the name has some, some significance, the importance is found in the composition and evaluation of quality points. A salad may be analyzed according to its structure and content along with its wholesome value. The garmage chef should consider the following variables when assessing the creation and presentation of salads. Composition. Salads traditionally have been structured with the following elements for hundreds of years. These parts are fundamental to most salads, but may not exist in all. Their uses, to a large degree, are subject to the needs of the meal, event, and in the opinion of the garmage chef. The four basic parts include base, body, dressing, and garnish. Basic parts of a salad. The base. The base serves as both the foundation upon which the salad is built and the canvas with which to frame the remainder of the ingredients. From a functional standpoint, the base gives definition to the placement of the salad, often cups the body of the salad, and collects and retains excessive dressing. Common bases include lettuce cups, chiffonade of lettuce, rice noodles, pineapple wedges, and avocado halves. The body is the most important part of the fo and focal point of the salad and is placed on the base. It generally represents the most substantial part of the salad and often lends its name to the salad itself. Examples of the salad body include tuna salad, chilled shellfish, fruit salad, and smoked duck salad. The dressing. The dressing is used to moisten and flavor the other ingredients, thereby enhancing the body of the salad. Dressings can add substantial flavor to mild salads, serve to contrast with existing flavors, or delicately enhance the dominant taste found in the salads. Dressings may be served on the side, often at request of the diet conscious customer, drizzled over the salad, or blended with the salad body of the salad. Common examples include mayonnaise, vinaigrette, blue cheese, poppy seed, and boiled dressings. The garnish. The purpose of the garnish is to add contrast in taste, texture, color, height, and aroma to the body of the salad. Early green salads were garnished with a spiced apple ring, parsley sprigs, black olives, tomato wedges, and cube croutons. Although functional, they lack the imagination and intensity in modern times. The body of the salad is flavored sufficiently to stand on its own merits. However, garmache chefs still use garnishes such as caramelized walnuts, crostini spread with fine herbs and boars and cheese, toasted sesame seeds, parmesan crisp, and lavish triangles to add texture, height, and drama, as well as contrasting flavors to their salads. Evaluation of quality points. When analyzing the merits of a salad, the chef must think about several variables that contribute to the salad's potential success both as a salad and as an item within a larger menu. The variety of ingredients and styles available to chefs allows for endless options. Careful consideration should be given to the following quality points. Appropriateness. This consideration is broad and encompassing. For example, it may not be appropriate to serve certain foods to people of specific religions, medical conditions, ages, or ethnic backgrounds, or it may be redundant to repeat the use of certain ingredients in a multi-course meal, including items such as seafood, mushrooms, cheese, or peppers. Taste, flavor, and aroma. If a food item lacks in taste and flavor, it should not be considered. There is little reason to suffer with anything less than palatable food. Likewise, as salads are frequently used as palate cleansers and the bridge between other foods and courses, they should possess an appealing aroma to aid the stimulating of the appetite. Appearance. Appearance is key to food appreciation. As the familiar expression reminds us, people eat with their eyes. The appearance should not only be pleasing, but also be in keeping with the theme and style of the meal. Texture and sound. Although the senses of hearing and touch are often overlooked when planning meals, 
They are important attributes of the dining experience. Variety and contrast in texture and sound while chewing the food add interest and value to most dishes. Nutritional value. Customers are increasingly concerned about their personal health and nutrition. It is both responsible and good business to address these interests by evaluating recipes and these concerns in mind and by making reasonable ingredient or cooking method substitutions when appropriate. Portion size. Portion size is relative to the entire meal and its purpose. The human body has both limited capacity and need for food in its digestive tract. Chefs must consider what is an appropriate quantity to serve. Additionally, the size of the ingredients should be evaluated for ease of consumption and appearance. Salad ingredients should be neither too large or too gracefully manipulated while dining, nor too small for pleasant appearance. Cost Financial constraints are a reality of business. It is prudent and responsible to evaluate all salads and other foods according to their cost contribution and margin for profit. Chefs must maintain a conceptual awareness relative to the food costs and their profitability. Practicality. When presenting quality food that is both flavorful and attractive, chefs should also consider the practical nature of the food. The salad must be designed to meet the needs of the customer and the abilities of the food operation and its staff. Modern types of salads. Nearly a century has passed since Escoffier wrote about salad and modern food service operations have embraced the cuisines of many distant cultures and lands where the role of salads has been more prominent. Indeed, our modern sense of gastronomy considers salads to be much broader in scope and content. Salads have evolved from being served only as an accompaniment to being served as a course of its own. Whether as a starter course, accompaniment, main course, separate course, dessert, or entire meal, salads are served at virtually any time of the day. Categorizing salads is as imperfect as classifying cheese. As salads have evolved beyond the limitations of classical cuisine, they no longer fit the definitions advanced by Escoffier and his contemporaries. Opening four different modern texts on culinary fundamentals will reveal as many different categories for salads. Some garmiger chefs believe that organizing salads by their ingredients is most useful, whereas others would argue that organizing them by their purpose makes the most, most sense. We choose to categorize them broadly into three primary types according to their content and structure. Simple, complex, and combination. Simple salads are those that are basic in nature and composition. They include light salads made from a variety of one or more greens, fruits, pastas, starches, or grains, but not in combination with each other. They are generally dressed in mild seasonings such as vinaigrette and are used as a course served around the entree. Examples include coleslaw, macaroni salad, potato salad, spinach salad, gelatins, and fruit cup. This is a German potato salad. Complex salads, also known as mixed salads, are heartier in character than simple salads and are composed of raw or cooked vegetables, fruits, meats, seafood, game, or poultry. Complex salads are seasoned with flavorful dressings or marinades and usually, and usually contain multiple ingredients from the same categories of foods. They are served as a salad course or as appetizers, accompaniments, or desserts. Examples of complex salads include seafood salad, grilled marinated vegetables, roasted meats or vegetables, and a fruit plate with citrus yogurt dressing. Pictured here is a roasted root vegetable salad. Combination or compound salads. In combination salads, also known as compound salads, all of the ingredients are not blended together as one homogeneous flavor as they are with simple or complex salads. They are generally comprised of several different categories of ingredients that are seasoned separately but presented together on the same plate. Combination salads are the most substantial of the salads and are generally featured as the main course. Examples of combination salads include chef salad, pasta primavera, warm grilled duck breast over greens with walnut vinaigrette, gorgonzola, salad, and nissoise. 
and boiled chicken and macadamia nut salad with pineapple wedges. Pictured here is a salad niçoise. Salad ingredients. Salad ingredients are not limited to any classification. There are a few absolute rules in cooking, but it is safe to say that anything edible can be used in salads. From the body of the salad to the sauce or dressing used to moisten and flavor the mixture, salads contain an endless variety of seasonings and ingredients. Vegetables. The importance of vegetables as guardians of good health is legendary. They have been recognized by folklore and used in primitive medicines. Early on, long before science of nutrition existed, doctors advised patients that vegetables would keep their humors of the body in balance. Modern biochemists have found that in addition to supplying energy-giving carbohydrates, vegetables provide almost all of the specialized vitamins and minerals necessary for good health. Of the more than 300,000 plant species on Earth, we have discovered almost 6,000 to be edible. Of these, only about 150 vegetables are consumed with any regularity in the world market. Vegetables can best be understood when classified into categories. Greens, vines, bulbs, roots and tubers, and legumes. Techniques in preparing vegetables. Although there are many similarities in the plant and vegetable world, the techniques used to select, wash, and prepare them differ to some degree. The color, texture, and flavor of each vegetable must be preserved for optimum guest appreciation. Harmony in both flavor and appearance is paramount in salad success. Preparing salad greens. Wide ranges of greens are used to prepare salads. The rules by which a chef may select particular greens, accept them from a supplier, and then prepare them for use is widespread knowledge. The following points are worth considering in these decisions. Freshness is the basis of good eating. Buy only greens that look the freshest. The leaves and stems should be free of rust spots and should be crisp when bent. Greens begin to lose their moisture immediately upon being plucked or cut from their roots. When possible, buy greens with their roots still attached to delay the process of oxidation. The best heads of lettuce are tightly closed but relatively firm to the squeeze. An immature head of lettuce feels like a puff of air when squeezed because it mostly is. The best broccoli or cauliflower has tightly packed flower heads, firm stems, and no sign of yellow or brown. In the previous slide, we saw greens being soaked in water. This takes off excess dirt or sand that might be possibly in the, the greens. Here is a salad spinner. The salad spinner uses centrifugal force to throw off any excess water on the greens. This excess water can tend to dilute the dressings that we use in our salads. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is often used by itself as a flavoring agent or base as other, for other ingredients. It is probably the most common of cold sauces and dressings because its flavor is function is so versatile. Um, care must be taken to cook an egg yolk without scrambling the egg. Sometimes yogurt is used as a substitute for mayonnaise based recipes. We will be using pasteurized egg yolks so they are safe to use. In the first slide we see forming the base for the mayonnaise we have egg yolks, mustard and our acid and then drizzling in the oil to form an emulsion much like we did with the hollandaise. Next slide we're adding the remaining oil to finish the mayonnaise. In the last slide we are seasoning the finished mayonnaise typically with salt and white pepper. basic French dressing or vinaigrette. In its most basic form, this dressing is also referred to as a vinaigrette. Of the three primary cold dressings, basic French is the least complicated. Its ingredients consist of oil and vinegar in a ratio of three parts oil to one part vinegar. The seasonings are also uncomplicated, including only salt and pepper. The emulsion created by rapid blending of the oil and vinegar is only temporary and must be quickly reworked before use. In the next slide we add the garnish and then the last slide seasoning the vinaigrette once again with salt and pepper.